Hello everybody, welcome to the supplemental instructional video on how to use the 360 camera thing that I created for my website. I actually created this for Robbie from Category 5 Technology TV and the clips I will be using in this instructional video were provided from him. So huge shout out to him for providing those files, though I did make all this for him. But um, yeah, that's because I do freelance work. So if you want me to do some freelance work, let me know. Um, and Category 5 Technology TV covers a bunch of technology stuff. So if you're interested in that, check them out. I'll have a link in the description if I remember. So let's get right into it. Say you have a 360 camera, but it's not actually 360. It's more like 220 or something, but it's not 360. This is set up for 220. Um, but yeah, you have two of them set back to back and you want to turn it into an actual full 360 video because well who wouldn't want to this is what you're gonna have to do and it's it's really simple really easy not a lot to it uh if i can do it anybody can do it right this is probably what you will be greeted with when you open the file something like this but we actually want to be in the compositing which you'll see something like this you won't see any images here these will probably just be pink i think because these two files will not exist but these are my two video clips. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. First off, I have two half sphere elongated shapes. They're stretched out a little bit. And uh, I have two camera inputs. So we are going to pretty much just be blending the seam on the two, which is why it's kind of fading to white. This white is actually transparent when it renders. So it just looks that way for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to select either one of these halves and then select our input video which in this case i will pick 7a and then we're going to go ahead and select the second one and we will select that video and the only reason i did both right away is so i wouldn't forget which one i selected because those names are not overly memorable all right so we've got something here that looks pretty horrific actually this is totally not lined up well at all but let's work with it Let's work with it. So first thing we want to do is set our offset to zero. We don't need that. Frames is going to be the number of frames that your video clip is. And both should be set to the same, most likely. Um, you'll have to find out what your clip length is, which you can pretty much do by multiplying the frame rate by the length of the video. And I'll tell you how many frames it is. Let's, uh, let's now get these two spheres set up so they kind of match. So what we're going to do is just jump someplace into the video. In this case, um, I should want to be like 550-ish. Just because there's some stuff there that I know of that makes it a little easier to match. All right, we have auto refresh. Yup, that's all set up, right? The only thing you should have to do is select your two video inputs. Everything else should be good to go for you. I'm going to hit zero to go to camera view. Uh, Shift Z will turn on the interactive render. And we'll notice uh, I have two people walking away from each other. Interesting. Quite interesting. All right. So let's zoom in a little bit more here. This has already been set up, so they're kind of synced. But you'll notice there should be, or there is rather, a difference between the two frames. One video started recording before the other. Um, I'm pretty sure it was negative 19 that I need to have my start frame set to. So I may have set that. That's pretty good. I remembered pretty close. You're not going to get a perfect seam with this. It's it's just not going to happen. But it's pretty close. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's Robbie standing there. But as long as there's not a lot of activity going on there, it matches pretty well. I mean, you can tell that, yeah, there's kind of some ghosting of these trees. And if I go over to the other side here, this tree is on a seam as well. There's a little bit of ghosting going on too. Now, I need to point something out right away. You put your videos in, this stuff's not gonna match up. You are probably going to have to do some rotating to get your images to match. So you're just gonna wanna select Either one of the two orbs be in top view, which you can switch to by hitting seven on your numpad. 
and then hit the R key to rotate. That's already set up pretty much right for me. Um, and then because it is two cameras back to back, the um, the cameras are probably not, the sensors I should say, are probably not running exactly parallel to each other, back to back but parallel. So you're not having a true 180 difference between them. So you'll notice on this one here, I've got a little bit of rotation going on in a couple directions. Like I got a little bit going here on the, I think that's the X. And I've got a little bit going on on the Y. And that's just to get this stuff to match up. That is something you're going to have to tweak if you have two cameras. You have to tweak it. I can't have a setup that's guaranteed to work for you unless your two cameras are perfectly 180 straight pointing out from each other. So just complete opposite directions to the T. And if that is the case, first off, congrats. And secondly, I have to do change your rotation on those two. And I guess put this one back to 180, negative 180. So that's perfectly rotated and uh, go ahead and get rid of the rotation on these as well. And then all you have to do is mess around with your rotation to get the direction that two cameras are pointing to match, which I guess if you had it perfectly matched every other way, they'll probably be matched perfectly that way too. But unfortunately, um, I don't operate in the perfect world, so my sources weren't perfect and I had to do tweaking to make the match. But that's pretty much it that there is to it. As far as setting it up, you're just putting your two video inputs, setting your frames, setting your frame offset between the two. And then obviously you have the exporting. So to export, we just go back to the default screen here. And we want to make sure we're using GPU compute if it's available, because we'll make it faster. It has to be using cycle renders as well. And then you just need to go down to your output location here but whatever location you want to export to and you're going to want to open up encoding well first you're going to make sure you're using ff ffmpeg video or avi jpeg or raw i guess if you want to use either of those and then you set up your export options here you find a lot of information about that on the internet i'm not going to cover it because i'm not too familiar with it i usually just go ahead and take a preset here like h264 and mpeg4 and then just use that and then uh your sampling's already all good here. I've got that all set up in the file just fine. So there's no need to change anything around there. Um, these actually can be set to one because they don't make any difference because the material is all, um, it's all emitting light. So it doesn't need to have any light balances because it lights itself. And there we go. So then you would just take this outputted video Oh, to render video, I should mention that. You either click the animation button or control F12 on the keyboard will render animation. And uh, on this particular clip, I'm looking at on my machine, uh, about five and a half seconds for a frame. So it does take a while. Your mileage will vary depending on your GPU and your computer and the moon phase. And I don't know, the purity of your water. <laughs> whole bunch of weird stuff that it wouldn't seem to make sense the last time you drank a coffee um but yeah you you would export the video out then you would run it through that script that uh, youtube provides for 360 video so then when you upload the video to youtube assuming of course you're doing that that youtube knows to process this video as a 360 video instead of as just a square video which is what it would do otherwise and then everything will work for you so hopefully that uh, helped you out with the file and if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I'd be more than willing to give you a hand. And uh, I should mention, I'd be more than willing to do any freelance work that you might want done. Uh, that's what I was doing. This is actually was freelance work. But um, seeing, how, seeing as how I wasn't getting paid, I'm just releasing everything for free for everybody in the entire world to use. And, uh, you know, to get a good little PR in there, you know, so that way people know who I am. And... That's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.